A uniform ladder 10 meter long and mass 40 kg rest in equilibrium against a frictionless vertical wall at an angle of 60 degrees to the ground. Calculate the magnitude and directions of the reactions at the wall and the ground. Now let's say this is the wall and then this is the ground. Okay, let's assume this is the this is the ladder. Okay, now notice that suppose that we have a ladder in this manner and then we have a wall. If you ex if you tilt this ladder at the top with the force of F, equal amount of force will be exerted from this wall upon the ladder because action and reaction are equal but opposite according to Newton's third law. So we get to record the reaction force on this ladder. Let's call it F. Now notice that if this ladder being placed on the ground it will exert its weight on the on the ground. But notice that the ground will also exert an equal but opposite force which is the normal reaction on the ladder so the the ground we exert it on the ladder and it has to be at the point of contact which is this place okay so let's call that n the ladder we exert its weight on the ground which is w notice that it has to be at the center of the ladder that is the midpoint since the length of the ladder is 10 meters then the length from this point is 5 meters. Okay, the angle at which it rests is 60 degrees. Now, notice that the ground has friction. The friction helps the ladder not to, not to slide forward. So the friction will be directed in this direction so as to prevent the ladder from sliding forward. Okay, now notice that the triangle that is being formed is a right angle triangle. Alright, so in order to find the torque that is caused by the reactions, okay, because we want to find the magnitude and direction of the reactions, so we want to find the magnitude of this force, and then the magnitude, this force is the reaction force that is caused by the wall on the ladder. But the reaction from the ground to the ladder is the reaction from the summation. Okay, let's call the frictional force. Let's call it FR. Is the reaction from the summation of both N, the normal reaction, and the frictional force. So the the reaction, the total reaction, that is the total reaction that will be that is that will be felt by the ladder from the ground let's have it in this manner so this is called the force of the ground on the ladder okay now notice that the force of the ground on the ladder the magnitude of the force of the ground on the ladder is the the square of the the normal reaction and this squared so that is the normal that is the formula to find the force that the ground exerts on the ladder notice that the force that the ground exerts on the ladder is the same thing as the force that the ladder exerts on the ground okay now but note, it should also be noted that the normal reaction in this case is the same thing as the weights. They are equal but opposite. And notice also that the force, which is the reaction force from the, lad from the wall to the ladder, is also equal to this frictional force. That means F is equal to FR. Because they are equal but opposite. So notice that in some questions, if you were asked to find the coefficient of static friction, since coefficient, since 
the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force but then the coefficient of static friction in this case is fr upon n so we we'll be, should be able to go on with that okay now in order to find the magnitude of this force then we need to assume a pivot a pivot let's say this is the pivot the pivot can be at any point but because we need to find f then we need to place our pivot at this point if we place pivot at this point then the torque at this point will be equal to zero as a result we will not be able to find this force because torque is the product of force and the distance and the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation so if we place axis of rotation in this place that means the distance is zero then the torque will be zero now in order to find the torque that is caused by f let's say the torque is t1 okay let me get rid of this space let's say the torque that is caused by f is t1 so that t1 is equal to the product of force and the moment arm where the moment arm is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the to the line of action so let's draw the line of action the line of action is the line that is parallel to the force is drawn from the force okay so the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation will be this distance okay so that we need to let's call this distance h which is the same thing as this h so to find the h we can use the soccer tour from the soccer tour we can see the sine of angle 60 degrees is equal to opposite which is h upon the hypotenuse the hypotenuse which is 10 so that h is equal to 10 sine 60 degrees so the torque of f1 is equal to product of force multiplied by 10 sine 60 degrees also we need to find the torque that is produced by the weight let's say tw we don't need to find the torque that is produced by n and the torque that is produced by the frictional force because they are at the pivot it will be equal to zero okay so we just need to find the torque produced by weight and f the weight multiplied by the moment arm notice that the torque that is produced by the weight is negative because it is clockwise since this is the axis of rotation then it will act in this manner and the torque that is produced by f will be positive since it acts in this manner so this is plus and then this is minus okay so the weight the weight weight is equals to mg and the mass is given as 40 g let's use 10 okay so the weight of that body will be equal to 400 newton okay so we we'll have minus 400 newton multiplied by the moment arm now let's find the moment arm this is the weight let's find its line of action this is the line of action and then the perpendicular distance will be this is the line from the axis of rotation so this is the perpendicular distance let's call the height let's call the distance from this point to this point let's call it d so it means that the distance from this point to this point will be d over 2 so that will be multiplied by d upon 2 now in order to find d we need to use the socatua so that we can say cosine of 60 degrees is equal to opposite is equal to adjacent which is d upon upon the hypotenuse which is 10 so that d is equal to 10 
cos 60 degrees so it implies that the 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 torque by the weight is minus 400 you know d upon 2 will be equal to 5 cos 60 degrees multiplied by 5 cos 60 degrees so the total torque has to be equal to 0 for us to have a static equilibrium then it means that T1 plus TW has to be equal to 0. Then since T1 is equal to F, then 10 sin 60 plus minus 400 multiplied by 5 cos 60 okay and it has to be equal to zero all right so that f multiplied by 10 sine 60 can be equal to 400 multiplied by 5 cos 60. notice that i have just transferred this to the other side of the equation minus 400 multiplied by 5 cos 60 Alright, so that by dividing both sides by 10 cos 60, if we divide both sides by 10 sin 60, sin 60, 10 sin 60, we we'll have F to be equal to 400 multiplied by 5 cos 60 upon 10 10 sin 60 okay now if you do this on your calculator 400 multiplied by 5 multiplied by cos 60 degrees then is 1000 then divided by 10 sin 60 okay so that's it becomes 115.47 Newton so the force that the wall exerts on the ladder which is a reaction force the magnitude of that force is 115.47 now in order to find its direction the direction of this force is is perpendicular to the wall the reaction is perpendicular to the wall that is it is at 90 degrees to the vertical or to the wall so that's the direction of that force now let's find that of the ground okay to find the reaction that is caused by the ground on the ladder that is the force of the ground on the ladder the magnitude of that force is equal to the root of the square of the normal reaction plus the square of the frictional force notice that the normal reaction is the same thing as the weight which is 400 newton squared plus the square of the of the force the frictional force fr and notice that the frictional force is the same thing as this force this force because they are equal and opposite so that is 115 115.47 squared all right so the 6.33 newton in order to find the direction of this force you know since we have its its dire its diagram as this this is the normal and then this is the fr and this is fgl so the direction let's make it angle theta now okay this normal force so the normal force which is the 400 newton and this is 
1105.47 so in order to find i have the opposite and i have the adjacent so we can make use of tan theta which is opposite upon the adjacent okay so 400 divided by 115.47 that's about 3.46 so that so that tan theta is equal to 400 divided by 115.47 which is equal to 3.46 then theta is equal to actan of 3.46 the actan of 3.46 that's 73.89 73.89 which can be approximated to 74 degrees so if theta is equal to 74 degrees if theta is equal to 74 degrees so the direction is 74 degrees towards the vertical 74 degrees towards the vertical okay so the direction of the force the 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 one the four one six point three three newton force is towards the vertical at seventy four degrees. All right, let's solve it in another way around for you to understand better. To find the torque that is being exerted by this force, the torque which is supposed to be equal to the product of that force. And its moment arm okay the first method in the first method I found the moment arm by locating the perpendicular distance but in this case we may resolve F we located it that way because F is not perpendicular to this line but we may resolve F into its perpendicular axis which is this axis into its vertical axis let's call it fy and then this is fx we fx has nothing to has no consequence on the on the beam or on the ladder because it cannot cause the ladder to rotate only perpendicular forces are able to cause the ladder to rotate all right so if i resolve f into this axis i will have okay before that since this angle is 60 degrees this angle will also be 60 degrees notice that they are alternate angles any angle that looks like this angle theta then this angle should also be theta they are alternate angles so if this angle is 60 if this will be f sine 60 so we'll just have to resolve the force into its perpendicular axis so that the the torque will be the product of the perpendicular force and the ladder the length of the ladder so in that case we will have the torque to be equal to f sine theta multiplied by the perpendicular axis which is 10 okay in this case the force which is f that's what we are looking for and it will to produce a positive torque okay now where theta is 60 degrees so that the torque will now be f sine 60 degrees multiplied by 10 all right so sine 60 degrees multiplied by 10 is root 3 over 2 multiplied by 10 that's 5 root 3 so that the torque caused by f is equal to 5 root 3 f all right let's find the torque that is caused by the weight to find the torque that is caused by the weight we need to resolve the weight into its perpendicular axis which is this 
let's call it wy okay now if this angle is 60 degrees then this angle has to be 30 degrees because this is a right angle triangle and this is 90 degrees so 90 plus 60 plus this has to be 180 degrees if this angle is 180 degrees then this angle has to be if this angle is 30 degrees then this angle has to be 30 degrees yes if if we have something of this nature if this angle is 30 degrees then you know they are equal so this should be 30 degrees all right so if this angle is 30 degrees then this will be w sine theta so if this is the perpendicular axis then it can multiply straight up with the provided that this is the angle this is the axis of rotation it can multiply the distance the perpendicular distance which will be five from this point to this point notice that that is the center of gravity which is always at the middle so the, the torque that is produced by the weight and it is a negative torque it is clockwise so it is the product of w sine sine 30 the product of w sine 30 by the distance which is 5 then 5 multiplied by sine 30 which is 2.5 so we'll have 2.5 minus 2.5 w notice that w is the product of mass times acceleration due to gravity that's 40 times 10 since 40 is the mass so we'll have 40 times 10 multiplied by 2.5 which is 1000 so that's minus 1000 as a result the sum of the torque which is equal to zero so that's 5 root 3 f then my plus minus 1000 is equal to zero so that's 5 root 3 is equal to 1000 5 root 3 f if we divide both sides by 5 root 3 5 root 3 then f will be equal to 1000 divided by 5 root 3 which is equal to 115.47 which is similar which is the same as what we arrived at at the initial solution but in this method we will need to resolve okay so if you continue with this you will get the other answers so let's solve the next practice problem all right i will advise that you pause this video try to attempt this problem it's similar to the first problem a 12 meter ladder so we have 12 meter ladder and it's resting on a frictionless wall i told you since it's a frictionless wall it does not require any other force so only the reaction force caused by the wall so we have that as our f1 and then the the wall we exert its weights vertically downwards at the middle of the ladder weight acts at the center so we have the weight and there must be an equal but opposite force to the weight which is on the ground which is from the ground towards the ladder let's call that f2 and since the ladder has friction and the friction will act backwards against the forward movement of the ladder so this is so this we have it as fr notice that this is a right angle triangle now let's have the 10 meters upon here no a 12 meter ladder a 12 meter ladder and then on a frictionless wall okay a 12 meter ladder that weighs 50 newton found rests on a frictionless wall at the point 10 meters above the ground so the height of the wall is 10 meters how much force does the ladder 
exert on the ground how much force the ladder exert on the ground that's supposed to be f1 the amount of the force i told you that the ladder exert on the wall is equal and opposite to the amount of the force that the wall exert on the ladder so if the ladder exert this force which is 50 let's assume it is f1 on the wall the wall will also exert f1 on the ladder okay equal but opposite now in order to find f1 let's say this is our axis of rotation if this is our axis of rotation then f2 and fr we will not will not cause any torque on the ladder because they are located at the axis of rotation all right so we can find the torque that is caused by f1 and the torque that is caused by the weight now notice that the weight is equal to 50 newton all right so in order to find the torque that is caused by f1 let's call that t1 that is product of f1 and the moment arm r f1 is f1 then r let's find r this is the axis of rotation so let's have a parallel line to it no 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 a perpendicular distance you see don't make the mistake of drawing the line of action in this manner for f because it is not parallel to f the only line of action that is parallel to f is this or you can do it upwards here okay so if this is the line of action is the line that is parallel to f1 then i can also have the line that is parallel then this is the line that is parallel to the axis of rotation and then the distance between the two points is given as 10 meters that means the r is 10 okay and the torque is positive due to the direction of the arrow towards the axis of rotation that is counterclockwise now let's say t2 is the torque that is caused by the weight and that's negative weight multiplied by the moment arm now this is the weight and then the line of action is this so the distance between these two points let's say this is d over 2 and then the distance between this point and this point let's say it is d so we need to find this d don't forget this is a right angle triangle so we can use the pythagorean formula to arrive at to get d this is 10 and then this is 12 so the pythagorean formula is the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the square of the adjacent plus the square of the opposite the hypotenuse is the longest side so 12 squared that's 144 then d squared plus 100 so it implies if i subtract 100 from both sides i will have 144 minus 100 to be equal to d squared and then this will be 44 which is equal to d squared it implies that if i square root both sides d will be equal to the square root of 44 the square root of 44 is is 2 root 11 so we can have 2 root 11 in here so if d is the is 2 root 11 it means that 2 root 11 it implies that d upon 2 is root of 11 so the torque that's caused by the weight is minus w multiplied by root 11 don't forget that w is the weight and the weight is given as 50 newton so we can have minus 50 root 11 so the sum of the torque has to be equal to zero for for the static equilibrium to occur so we can say that f1 that's 10 f1 minus 50 root 11 must be equal to zero you know i just added plus and because we have minus so so it's the same thing as if i have it in this manner 10 f1 minus 
50 root 11 to be equal to 0. Now the, it implies that 10 F1, if I if I add 50 root 11 to both sides, or if I take 50 root 11 to the other side, I will have something of this nature. I can divide both sides by 10 in order to obtain F1. Okay, let me get rid of this. Okay, so if I divide both sides by 10, I'll have something of this nature. 10, 10, 10, 10. So that F1 is equal to 5 root 11 Newton. So the 5 root 11 does equal to 16.5. 16.58 Newton is the is the force that the ladder we exert on the wall on the wall now the force that the ladder exerts on the wall is the same that the wall we exert on the ladder so let's find the force that the ladder exerts on the ground don't forget that the force that the ladder exerts on the ground is the same force that the ground exerts on the ladder. The f okay. So 16.58 is the amount of force that the ladder exerts on the wall and is the same as the amount of force that the wall exerts on the ladder. Now because they are equal and opposite force action and reaction now let's find the amount of force that the ladder exerts on the ground now the amount of force that the ladder exerts on the ground is the amount of force that the ground exerts on the ladder okay and that can be seen in f2 this f2 and then the frictional force so the ground is exerting frictional force and the normal reaction on the ladder so what we will do is to find the resultant is to find the resultant of these two the sum the resultant of the two forces and that will give us the total force that the ground exerts on the ladder which is the same as the force that the ladder we exert on the on the ground okay to do that we we'll have something of this nature. Let me get rid of this. Okay. All right. Now, the resultant, which is the force from the ground to the ladder, FGL. Don't forget that force from the ground to the ladder is the same thing as force from the ladder to the ground. So, the both has to be equal that force this is the force up, up here okay let me draw it out so where this is the frictional force and this is the normal reaction f2 this is the total force caused by the ground on the ladder or from the ladder to the ground so we get to find the resultant which is the square of f2 plus fr squared don't forget that f2 is equal to the weight of the object and that is 50 newton so it implies that 50 squared plus f2 squared um, not f2 now fr okay so fr notice that fr is also fr is also equal to f1 they are equal but opposites okay f1 is also equal to fr so we can say that fr is also equal to 16.58 okay so we can have 16.58 squared okay so the total force will be equal to the square root of 50 squared plus 16.58 squared so finally 
the answer is 52.68 newton 52.68 newton is the force that the ground exerts on the ladder and it's the same force that the ladder we exert on the ground if you were asked to find the coefficient of static friction caused by the ground notice that the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal normal force in this case in our own case the normal force is given as f2 and the static frictional force is given as fr so we can say that fr is equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force which is f2 it implies that the coefficient of the static friction is equal to fr upon f2 notice that fr is equal and opposite to f1 and f1 is given as 16.58 then upon f2 where f2 is equal to the weight which is 15 newton and as a result the coefficient of static friction which is 16.58 divided by 50 is equal to 0 0.3 0 0.3 is the coefficient of static friction. A 250 Newton box hangs from a rope. If the box is pushed with a horizontal force of 145 Newton, the angle between the rope and the vertical is what? Now let's say that this is the this is the point of attachment of the rope and the box. The box is 250 Newton. That is a weight of, it has a weight of 250 Newton. Now let's say you exert an horizontal force. Horizontal force on the box. According to the question, which is a force of 145 Newton. The, the object will shift its position into this manner and then the weight which is always vertically downwards will be equal still be equal to 250 newton and then there will be an angle here which is angle theta with the vertical so we're looking for angle theta the force is 145 newton so let's have the free body diagram the free body diagram will represent the mass as a dot Okay, and then we'll have the cardinal point around the mass. Okay, now the, the free body diagram is a diagram that shows the external forces of the, of the mass. Alright, so the forces that occurs on the mass, the first force, let's call that the weight, which is equal to 250 Newton and it acts vertically downwards. All right, there is a tension on the string. The tension is along this direction and is at angle theta to the vertical. Okay. So, and we also have a, an horizontal force which is along this direction and that is F. So, we have the tension is directed upwards. The direction of the tension is towards the pull of an object. So, it helps to pull an object upwards against gravity which always acts downward so tension is always upwards against gravity all right so we can find the resolution of the vectors in order to have an equilibrium the sum of the forces acting on this mass has to be equal to zero it means that the sum of the forces on the x-axis must be equal to zero and the sum of the forces on the y-axis must be equal to zero. So if I resolve tension to the x-axis, I will have T sine theta. Since there is no angle here, I already explained the reason. Then in this place, I will have T cos theta. Now, notice that, okay, so on the x-axis, the summation of the forces on the x-axis is notice that this is along the negative 
x direction so that we have minus t sine theta plus f which is another positive x axis plus f is equal to zero notice that this equation is a vector equation that is the vector sum of all the forces so we are adding them with respect to their direction and that's why we always make use of the minus and the plus okay now the implication is that the summation of the forces on the y-axis as well which is t and is along the positive y-axis t cos theta minus w has to be equal to zero because w is along the negative y-axis so from equation two this equation i can take w to the other side so that t cos theta will be equal to w so that and of course we know the weight we know the weight the weight of the object is 250 newtons so we can say 250 newton so to find the so it implies that t cos theta is equal to 250 newton so from equation one we're actually looking for angle theta we also know f from equation one let's call this equation equation star okay from let's call this equation one and this is our equation two from equation one we can infer that f is equal to t sine theta that is by taking minus t sine theta to the other side of the equation if f is equal to t sine theta and of course we know the value of f f is the horizontal force which is 145 newton so it means that t sine theta is equal to 145 newton okay let's call this equation star star so what we need to do in order to find angle theta is to divide equation star star divide equation star star by equation star if we do that we'll have t sine theta upon t cos theta which has to be equal to 145 upon 250 as a result the tension tends to cancel out sine theta upon cos theta that is tan theta then 145 divided by 250 okay 145 divided by 250 that is 0 0.58 0 0.58 so that means angle theta is equal to the arc tan of 0 0.58 the arc tan of 0 0.58 is equal to 30 degrees so the angle theta is equal to 30 degrees it's actually 30.11 degrees so we can approximate to 30 degrees all right so that's it a beam three meter long has a weight of 200 newton at one end and another weight of 80 newton at the other end the weight of the beam itself is negligible find the balance point of the beam away from the 80 newton force okay now let's say this is the beam okay it has a length of three meters it has a weight of 200 newton at one end so this is the weight of the body and that's equal to 200 newton okay and another weight of 80 newton at the other end so we have another weight of 80 newton at this end okay now the weight of the beam is negligible so we don't get to put anything here find the balance point the balance point is actually the axis of rotation so the point where the beam will be rotating the point where it will balance okay okay away from the 80 newton force okay let's represent let's say the balance point notice that the balance point 
will be closer to the point where there is more forces where there are larger forces so let's say this is the balance point because if there are large forces here that means this object will tend to fall towards this direction causing a torque causing the body to rotate in this direction because there is a large force a larger force so the balance point if it is located the balance point has to be located around here so that the body will keep up with this small distance all right so let's say the distance from this point is x and the distance from this point will be 3 minus x because the whole distance is 3 okay now the torque that 18 18 force will cause will be along this direction and this will cause a torque along this direction so the product of the force and the moment arm or the perpendicular distance from the 80 newton force let's say t1 is 80 multiplied by x okay and it's it has to be positive it is positive okay now the one from the 200 newton force t2 is negative so 200 multiplied by 3 minus x okay so the sum of the torque which is t1 plus t2 the torque is positive so we have plus plus 80x then plus minus 200 multiplied by 3 minus x which is equal to 0 so that 80x minus 200 multiplied by 3 minus x that's actually minus 600 then plus 200x which is equal to 0 all right so the implication is that i will have 80x to be added to 200x which is 280x minus 600 it has to be equal to 0 okay then 280x is equal to 600 so if i divide both sides by 280 it means that the x will be equal to 600 upon 280 600 upon 280 oh 600 divided by 280 that's 2.14 so the distance the distance of the balance point is 2.14 meters and that's the answer the balance point is located 2.14 meters away from the 80 newton force and then if you want to find it away from the 200 newton force that's just 3 minus the answer which is 0 0.85 so that's 0 0.85 away from this 200 newton force let's solve the next practice problem the front wheels of a truck support 8 kilo newton and its rear wheels support 14 kilo newton the front wheel of a truck supports 8 kilo newton and its rear wheel supports 14 kilo newton the axes are separated by four meters what is the center of gravity let's say this is the truck the the wheel the the rear wheel of the truck and this is the front wheel of the truck they are separated you know by a distance of four meters okay if this supports a load of a load of and this is the front wheel it supports a load of 14 kilo newton the rear wheel supports a load of 8 kilo newton now let's represent this on a free body diagram this free body diagram is 
is the free body diagram used to represent rotational equilibrium. So this point is the wheel, is the rear wheel, and it supports a load whose weight is 8 kN. And this is 14 kN. Alright, so the center of gravity okay, is the point at which there is equal distribution of masses you know along the object along the body so it has to be at the well, let's put it it has to be closer to the it is similar to the balance point so it has to be closer to the point where there is a large force so that it will be able to balance up now let's say the distance is x here and the distance here since the wheel they are four meters then this has to be the distance here will be four minus x so just like the initial example the torque is this and this is the torque the torque that is caused by the eight kilonewton force is positive and the torque that is caused by this is negative so let's say so the torque that is caused by and the sum of the torque has to be equal to zero so that is eight thousand that is eight kilo okay multiplied by x plus minus fourteen thousand multiplied by 4 minus x it has to be equal to 0 so that I will have 8000 x plus minus 14,000 that's 14,000 multiplied by 4 which is 56,000 so I'll have minus 56,000 then plus 14,000 x which is equal to 0 so that's 8,000 x minus 56,000 plus 14,000 x is equal to 0 so the addition of 8,000 and 14,000 that's equal to 22,000 22,000 x minus 56,000 is equal to 0 so that 22,000 x is equal to 56,000 so the implication is that I'll divide both sides by 22,000 if I divide both sides by 22,000 22,000 then x will be equal to 56,000 divided by 22,000 which is equal to 2.54 meters so the distance away from the 8 kN force is actually 2.54 meters so we can find it away from the 14 kN force that is 4 minus which is equal to 1.45 1.45 meters all right so that's it a 4 meter wooden platform weighing 160 newton is suspended from the roof of a house by ropes attached to its end. A painter weighing 640 newton stands 1.2 meter from the left end of the platform. Find the tensions in each of the ropes. Okay, now let's say this is the the beam. Assuming this is the wooden platform, which is four meters. Okay, and it weighs 160 newton. 
so the weight is 160 newton all right it's suspended from the roof of a house by ropes attached to its ends so there are road attached to its ends okay so we have two ropes attached to its ends so let's say this is the roof okay now a painter weighing 640 newton stands 1.2 meter from the left end of the platform okay from the left hand end let's say this is the left hand end so we have 1.2 meters okay there is a painter who is standing and this place and that painter will exert a weight its weight which is vertically downwards and the weight is 640 newtons so the remaining distance that is 4 that is 2 that's 2 minus 1.2 that's supposed to be 0 0.8 meters okay find the tensions in each of the ropes all right so the tension which are directed vertically upwards okay tension t and then tension t which is in the on the in the rope tension t that is t1 and then let's say this is t1 and then this is t2 now in order to find this we need to say that okay let's say does let's find the sum of the torque where one of the uh, let's uh, let's find the axis of rotation okay in order to find in order to f f say that the sum of the torque is equal to zero then we should have an axis of rotation okay since it is not specified we can choose any of the points as the axis of rotation let's say this is our axis of rotation this point is the axis of rotation okay that means about this point the tension t1 we cause a torque of let's say t1 that is okay we cause a torque of let's say this is the t t1 okay we cause a torque of t1 multiplied by 4 because the perpendicular distance from t1 to the axis of rotation is 4 meters all right so let's say t2 is the torque that the weight of the ladder will cause and the weight of the ladder is located at the middle of the ladder the midpoint that is two meters away from the axis of rotation that is 160 multiplied by two and don't forget that the weight we exert a positive torque towards the axis of rotation since it is along this direction that is counterclockwise so it, it has to be positive but the torque we exert a negative torque on the on the wooden platform since the arrow is upwards here so in order towards the axis of rotation that is clockwise now let's say t3 is the torque that the 640 newton weight of the of the painter and that will also occur in this manner so we we'll have plus 640 and the distance is 0 0.8 plus the remaining distance here which is 0 0.8 plus 2 that is the distance from this point to this point is 2 plus 0 0.8 okay that's supposed to be 2.8 all right so the sum of the torque has to be equal to zero so that's minus t1 that's minus 4 t1 then plus 160 multiplied by 2 that's supposed to be equal to 320 then plus 640 multiplied by 
that's supposed to be one simple nine two and it has to be equal to zero so one seven nine two plus three twenty that's equals to two one one two that's minus forty one plus two one one two is equal to zero so that I can take minus forty one to the other side so that two one one two will be equal to forty one the minus becomes positive on the other side divide both sides by four if we divide both sides by four the implication is that t1 will be equal to 2112 divided by 4 which is equal to 528 528 newton now let's find the second torque all right so since we have exhausted we have already used the condition this condition for this and we need another equation so as to be able to find t2 we can make use of the other condition which says that the sum of the force around this the wooden beam has to be equal to zero so let's consider that condition so that we'll be able to arrive so that we'll be able to get an answer for the second tension now let me get rid of the spaces the sum of the forces on the x-axis has to be equal to zero and the sum of the forces on the y-axis has to be equal to zero now what are the forces on the x-axis there is no force on the x-axis but we have forces on the y-axis on the y-axis we have t1 which is directed upwards that's along the positive y-axis plus t2 which is also positive and then we have the 640 newton which is directed towards the negative y-axis okay and then the weight which is 160 newton negative directed towards the negative y-axis that means 640 with the 6 160 that's minus 800 so that's t1 plus t2 minus 800 is equal to zero it implies that t2 is equal to 800 minus t2 that is by taking minus 800 to the other side of the equation and taking plus t2 to the other side of the oh plus t1 we need to take plus t1 so that we can make t2 the subject of the formula now but recall that t1 is 528 so that is 800 minus 5 28 it implies that t2 which is 800 minus 528 is equal to 272 newton so that is the tension on the rope if you make use of the the summation of the torque equal to zero we obtain the first tension then we can make use of the second condition in order to get the other parameter so Try, make sure you subscribe to this channel i'll be produ because i'll be producing more videos that will help you and share with your friends